Hi, my name is Lily. I was born and grew up in China. I was two years old when Mao started his Cultural Revolution. I was 12 when he died. Imagine I was four years old. My memory started with seeing a dead man's body naked, floating on the water of this very deep community shared water well. I was told years later, that he committed a suicide and he was a black class. Mao used the Cultural Revolution to purge his political enemies. He shut down schools and told the Red Guard to go to get rid of four old, old culture, ideas, habits, and customs. So they did. Top down statues, burnt down churches, temples, burned books and cultural relics looting shops and homes with old cultural items and make black class people to go to struggle sessions publicly, delong themselves, shame them, make them apologize for their past and make the children delong their family and change last names. They also change the names of streets, schools, institutions to show they get rid of the old names. Censorship, self-censorship, they're everywhere that the press controlled by one party dictatorship constantly feeding propaganda in our daily lives. We did not know what truth was. Law enforcement was told to stand down where people being tortured publicly and there's no rule of law, no due process. 20 million people died during the 10 years social political chaos. I was a red child of working poor class. I was brainwashed. I Me, mean, I thought Mao was a, like a god. I'm very concerned, terrified to say what is going on on American soil today. Divide and conquer citizens is a typical Marxist communist tactic. I hope people realize that. I would hate to go through another cultural revolution.各位好 我们知道，习近平最邪恶的理论就是阶级斗争。他们告诉人们，你们中的一部分人是被压迫着的后代，而另一些人是压迫的人。所以你们要相互杀害。中国在过去的七十年里，让农民杀害抢劫地主，让工
，相互开枪杀杀害对方。这是一场以阶级斗争为名的人类的大劫难。但是，今天美国出现了一种种族主义理论，就是实际上它就是中国的阶级斗争的翻版。他们同样是把人们分成压迫者和被压迫者，然后让人们分裂和去斗争。我们不认为美国存在种族歧视，至少我从来没有遭遇过。相反，我一直受到了很多尊重。谢谢大家。My name is Xi Van Fleet. I left China to come to America 35 years ago. The Chinese Cultural Revolution started in 1966. It lasted for 10 years until Mao's death in 1976. I was a first grader when the Cultural Revolution started. I spent my entire school years in the Cultural Revolution. After I graduated from high school, I was sent to the countryside to work in the fields to be re-educated by the peasants. During the Cultural Revolution, I witnessed the Red Guards rampage through my city in search of anything old to destroy. Because Mao ordered them to dismantle the four olds: old ideas, old tradition, old customs, and old habits. The Red Guards tore down Buddhist statues and temples. They went door to door to raid homes to smash old furniture, old books, old vases, and old whatever. Many were beaten, some to death. The Red Guards also changed the street names, school names, and store names, even personal names, to be politically correct. These Red Guards were thoroughly indoctrinated youth from colleges and public schools. They became the destructive force of the Chinese civilization. Now. America has its own Red Guards. They too are the indoctrinated youth trained by the indoctrination mills of our public schools and universities. We see the American Red Guards on campus silencing any conservative voices. We saw them on the streets during the summer of unrest of 2020, burning and terrorizing our cities. They have also. Become a destructive force of the Western civilization and the American civilization. If we want to save this republic for our future generation, we must act now. Hi, my name is Amani. I was born and raised in China. I was born a year after Mao died. Therefore, I never suffered physical hunger like my friends did, but I suffered a different kind of misery and pain, the starvation of the mind. I worked for a top multilingual radio station in China for eight years. In the 2000s, what I experienced there taught me that the Cultural Revolution in the Chinese media or propaganda sector never truly ended. Only one voice was allowed: the parties. Only one opinion was the correct opinion: the parties. Our job was not to report facts, but to keep a positive image of China under the Communist Party's glorious leadership, and demonize the Western and democratic countries as evil, where their people were suffering and oppressed. We were constantly trained on how to direct the public opinion in the correct direction, silencing and vilifying all those who disagree with the party's narrative. Yet in today's America. Especially during the last 18 months, I've seen a strange change. The media, the educational system, and the big corporations here all seem to have unanimously adopted the same tactics to drown out different voices. Only those who agree with them are encouraged to talk. Those who disagree are not only ignored but often labeled, mocked, shamed, and outright silenced. Those who dare to speak their minds. Often risk losing their jobs and being shunned by the communities that they grew up in. This is why I feel compelled to come out and speak my truth, because I've seen it all happen before in China, and I'm appalled to see it happening here again in my beloved new homeland. 
Destruction of the mind starts with the destruction of free expression and suppression of a person's curiosity and ability to question and to disagree. It would not solve any problems in real life or lead to enlightenment. Instead, it will destroy the human spirit, the culture and the environment of free thoughts, free exchange of ideas, creativity and innovation. Thank you.